They started building this back in 1886, opened 10 years later. Uh, took a while to get open just because the state ran out of money and they pulled the funds several times. And then it closed December 31st, 1990. From uh, 1896 to when it closed, it ran as the prison. We had about 155,000 inmates that we're aware of come through the grounds at that point. It started as a boys reformatory, first time nine violent offenders. It ended as a maximum security prison, so there's a lot of changes along the way. When the Preservation Society uh, first approached the state of Ohio about this project, the building was scheduled for demolition and actually had been scheduled to be closed as early as uh, 1986. Um, so uh, any maintenance on the building was deferred and roofs were leaking and things like that even as the prisoners were here. And when the last of the prisoners left in 1990, uh, it was intended to be demolished. But it took another four years for the Preservation Society to actually gain access to the building. So there was about a period of seven years where nothing was being done to help the building. And then there was quite a bit of active destruction going on as well, too, in the anticipation of demolition. So when we took over the building, it was pretty much everything. Walls, roofs, there was no electricity, there was no water, it had all been shut off and demolished on top of that. So we had to start the infrastructure all over again. Well, we have that in place. We have electricity. We have restrooms within the building that we never had before. Um, roofs have been maintained now. Uh, storm drainage, uh, keeping the water out of the building is very important. Some of the areas have heat now. And uh, moving forward, there's still a lot of things to do. Uh, the building is over 200,000 square feet, and uh, it's a lot of projects for a lot of people in the future as well, too. The um, one thing we do get when people tour, however, is a, uh, you know, we get comments, you're not going to fix it up too much, are you? I mean, there's still parts of it that are kind of neat, especially the cell blocks being kind of gritty and peeling and looking pretty nasty and everything. Obviously, there's, there's certain reasons why people who are like ghost hunters or uh, movie scouts or something like that, like that. But um, it'll be a while before we get all of the quote unquote finished spaces done, you know, the warden's quarters, the museum spaces and everything before we're faced with uh, those type of decisions. But hopefully we will someday. The preservation is important because we're a society that preserves this building. The restoration is important, it's just sometimes the best way to do it is to restore. Um, if you're going to have anything here to bring it back to what it once looked like when it was operating, you're having to restore it. And also just for safety reasons. There are areas, when we got it, that were in bad shape. And so restoring it brought it back to being able to be used as well. And so restoration is important for that, plus just the appearance. People love seeing the work going on, they let them know their money's going to something important not just being, you know, thrown out the window, but the windows are being fixed with that money. Currently, the, the big restoration project is seen behind me partly. It's the West Admin. That's the bottom floor. That would have been where the warden's office was, his secretary, whoever he wanted down here. We've been deemed the official prison museum for the state of Ohio. And so we started this project in January. It started with a lead abatement. We put a boiler in. <laughs> that led to having to put in new water lines, gas lines, get the vents working, get the heat ducts working, put in new ducts, and that allowed us to be able to start doing the restoration work. And so this whole bottom floor is being redone to what it wants to look like. That means the woodwork has to be done, scraped by hand, sanded, stained, varnished. The ceilings were hanging in many places. The ceilings had to come down, exposing the brickwork. New ceilings had to go up. You can't go to the store and buy crown molding like you see in the corners of this. That all had to be remade. The walls had to go back up as far as the, uh, the process of covering the brick, things of that nature. The floors need to be done. Every floor needs to have a new floor put on except for the tile floor. That's still original. We'll redo that one. And so we have a lot of work to go on this preservation. It'll be the Prison Museum and we're thrilled about that. But to get it to that point, it's going to take us about a year. 
of constant work. Professional laborers as well as several volunteers come in that we can use uh, or doesn't break our liability issues, things of that nature for insurance. But we've got a couple guys, Ron and Marty, they come three, four times a week and sit here and scrape the wood. Uh, the doorway to my left, for instance, I've got two weeks in that doorway alone scraping. We got a lot of doorways, a lot of wood. And so it's a labor intensive because we're doing it properly. The inside walls are all solid brick. So when we have to do electric, you can't just add it. So we've got to channel out the brick. That brings electricians in. Well, that means the drywallers can't be working. And so part of that is keeping everyone here at the right time so they're not falling over each other or wasting time. That's a wasted expense. And so a lot of the job is management. A lot of the job is having the people here at the right time. Um, for volunteers, it's committed people who are willing to learn a job and do it. And when we have to have professionals in, it's a matter of them coming in, being able to do the job at the right time. Uh, that, that's all important. We've, for instance, in this room, we've got three different window teams, plus some of our people. We have a guy that works stained glass. The stained glass windows were taken out about 20 years ago. They were sent out three years ago to be repaired. Well, they're all going back in little by little. We've got a guy that frames them and puts them in. However, the area has to be prepped. So another team comes in, takes the old stuff out, preps it, put thermal panel in, which had to be ordered, had to be made. Uh, another person will come in and clean the area up to make that ready. And then all the double hung windows underneath it's another person again. So just for the windows, I've got a lot of people working here. The prison's doing a great job, but you can see how it can get tangled up in a hurry if you don't have the right people at the right time. And that's on three floors worth of windows getting done and only one floor of restoration right now. Okay. Future plans, preservation is always 100% all the time. We're a preservation society. So every part of this building, every part of the grounds, we have to consider preserving. We would like to look at the second floor above us. For Shawshank fans, that's where Andy's office is, that's where the warden's office is for the movie. It has gone through lead, uh, lead abatement, and so it's encapsulated in a white, white encapsuling treatment. It used to be painted like the movie, so we missed the colors. But we'd like to bring that fully back. Everything that's going on down here will go on up there, which means the woodwork has to be hand scraped. The floors have to be looked at. The walls have to be looked at. The ceilings have to be looked at. And then we've got several things to look at. Um, we have people who love the Shawshank movie from around the world. A lot of people from around the world come here to see this place because of it. But then I have one, two, three other rooms like this. What do you do with? So do we bring them back to what they look like when the assistant warden lived here? Do we make that into a Hollywood area and put all Hollywood memorabilia from the differing movies that were shot here in that area? We've got time to decide that, but we want to restore that area up there uh, as one of our next ones. And that'll lead us to the whole second floor because the whole front half of the building has heat now. And so we can do the whole second floor. It's just a matter of the finances coming in. The east side where the warden's quarters was, We've already laid some floor wood down there, uh, not regular flooring, just, just a, uh, a panel just to keep it steady again. We've started scraping some windows. We can bring that back to museum quality and make that like it was when the warden lived there, or maybe just one room, what did it look like when he lived there, and more museum in there. We haven't gotten that far yet, but we want to do that. We have cell block windows, the, the south side has been mostly completed. We have the north side to do, that's going to be another 25 windows about. Um, and you just can't find them in a store. They all have to be completely redone. The bars have to come down, be sent out, fixed up. The old windows have to come out. New ones that are replica to the originals have to be made. You can't find that stuff. The glass panels, they don't make those. Each one has to be made for each window. Then they have to be put back in and the bars have to go in. That's a big project. It'll be a couple year project just to do those windows. And so we have a lot to keep us going with no difficulties. Plus anything that breaks down, it's unexpected. Now all of a sudden you have to look at, is it just a repair, preservation? Or is it an area that we can do a little bit of preservation in? And, and so your budget kind of gets funny because you have a project like this behind me, the doors, the walls, all being worked on. But when something goes wrong in another part of the building we weren't expecting, how do you put the time and the money to repair that particular thing? If a 
downspout goes and water starts coming in the building again, and that happens once in a while. If it's a part of the building we're just preserving, let's fix it, preserve it, be done. If it's a part of the building we just did, or it's done, now you've got to not only fix it, you've got to bring the preservation back to it. And so your, your budget just doubled for something you didn't budget to begin with. And so we have lots of plans. Uh, it's, it's, it's a prison, we got time. <laughs> we'll get there. Well, visitors are helping because we are not state funded. We're a 50, uh, 503C3 not-for-profit, sorry about that, which means the state doesn't give us money. The way we get money is through donations or through the events we put on here, tour season. Every person that comes through here, their donation to this place through taking the tours funds all the things going on in this room and around the prison. Our overnight ghost hunts, uh, the weddings we've done, the home and garden shows, all the events that teaches people about the history. And even the home and garden show, people come in, can take tours and learn about the history. Um, that, that's the idea of this place, keep the history going. And so everyone that comes in is paying for this. And when we get to take a tour, we'll tell them about the floors. We'll tell them about the woodwork. We'll tell them how we're repairing it so they can get the feel, get the understanding of how important it is for them to come through here. Because we have about 100 volunteers every year. Without the money, they're just wandering around a broken down building. And so we need the people to come in.